The Pyro, a title that sends shivers down the spines of anyone who dares hear it. It's the only name that we can agree on when describing this Machiavellian, this freak, this thing. They are shrouded in mystery, so much so that we have no idea what gender they are, nor if they are even human. But this pales in comparison to their terrifying and total disregard for humanity. All they care about is fire, and everything in their path must be set ablaze to satisfy their sick, twisted it's a world of fantasy. They gallop around Pyro Land, where they are the sworn protector of peace and harmony. Everybody here is always having fun, but they couldn't be happier with the Pyro around, who always has just the right thing to cheer them up. Without Pyro, this land would be, be a, a much better place. We can only imagine a world without their fire, straight from the depths of hell. But maybe, by entertaining that idea, we might get closer to taming this beast. <laughs> Welcome to the second episode of What If X Was an X, a series where I take a random class from Team Fortress 2 and remove their most important characteristics, making an attempt to rebalance them afterwards. The pilot episode featured the heavy weapons guy, who went from a strong man with a high capacity for damage to a weaker strong man with less capacity for damage. I'll admit these videos sound hit or miss, and they definitely will be, but the heavy was just the starting point and the class that gave me the idea for this series in the first place. The pyro, on the other hand, has so much more potential at face value, so of course they were going to be my next target. As was the case last time, this video was divided into determining Pyro's main traits, replacing them, and testing out the results in-game. So let's not waste any more time and get started with what will likely be the most stretched out portion of this video. If all we are looking at are the numbers on the Pyro's wiki page, they seem like your average class. Their base health is 175, which is the closest any class can get to the average health value. They also run at 300 hammer units per second, which is, you guessed it, the average speed value. But we all know that there's more behind the mask. Fire is everything when we're talking about the Pyro. Other classes do have access to fire, but only through unlockable weapons. The soldier could use the alternate fire of the cow mangler to charge up a fiery explosive, the heavy can surround himself with a ring of fire using the Hua Long heater, and the sniper can light his huntsman arrows on fire, but only on maps with torches or when a pyro is around. The air blast is an extremely versatile support function that is exclusive to the pyro. It acts not only as a buffer between the pyro and their enemies, but also a way to extinguish teammates, redirect damage onto projectile classes, kill enemies via pit death, break uber charge between a medic and their patient, and even rocket jump using enemy rockets. Both fire output and and air blasting are all possible with the Pyro's primary weapons, barring the Phlogistonator, of course. All of them have incredibly similar primary fires, with the most differences stemming from their particular specialization in alternate fire nerfs. Pyro's secondary weapons are admittedly all over the place, but they all have the same philosophy of being long-range backup options. Shotguns deal consistent damage, flare guns produce flames outside of the Pyro's range, the thermal thruster creates additional ambush opportunities, and the gas passer extends Pyro's fiery capabilities to their teammates. Their melees are similarly scattered, providing them with all kinds of different close combat combat buffs for any situation they might find themselves in, whether that be rolling out, comboing, defending engineered buildings, or swimming. These weapons essentially make the Pyro a jack of all trades in close combat. In short, the Pyro has five defining characteristics, fire, air blast, and their three weapon slots. But now we must make the tough call on deciding which one of these is the most important. I'm kidding, of course. Fire is most definitely Pyro's strongest trait. But unlike how simple it was to rule out characteristics from the heavy, there's some overlap present within Pyro. By banning the ability to commit arson, all of Pyro's primary weapons are in validated, and since these are the only weapons in the game that can air blast, we're also losing out on that. That's three total traits that are completely gone from the class, and you might be wondering how I can possibly replace all of them. Well, if I couldn't, this video wouldn't have been made, so let's get into exactly what I ended up doing. Let's look at the stock flamethrower for a second. It has 200 loaded ammunition, which acts as a counter, going down by one about every tenth of a second, and it never needs to reload. There are only two types of weapons in Team Fortress 2 that behave like this. The first are the Pyro's flamethrowers, but we already determined that we can't use any of them, so that leaves us with the the second type, miniguns. That's right, the same type of weapon that we removed from the heavy in his video we are now adding to the pyro in theirs. Yet because of the sheer difference between the two types of weapons, some rebalancing is needed. The flamethrower deals between 86 and 174 damage per second within 200 hammer units. Afterburn 2 chips at an enemy's health, ranging from 32 to 80 total lost because of it. This is very different from the minigun, which deals between 475 and 513 damage per second at its closest point. It also needs to spin up and wind down outside of firing. If 
If we take the maximum potential damage from a full second of sustained fire at point blank for both weapons and include afterburn, we arrive at 254 for the flamethrower and 513 for the minigun. Therefore, by ignoring damage fall off and using the power of estimation, we can apply a 50% damage penalty to our custom minigun to even things out. All that's left to do is remove the spin-up time and increase the pyro speed, cancelling all the negative effects of the minigun. For the secondary slot, all flare guns and the gas passer are banned, which leaves us with the shotguns and the thermal thruster. The minigun already deals bullet damage, and I simply couldn't resist the idea of a pyro with a minigun raining down on unsuspecting enemies, so for this experiment I equipped the thermal thruster. And now it comes down to what melee to choose, and just like the heavy melees, it depends on personal preference, as long as you're not cheating by using the sharpened volcano fragment. So, our pyromaniac has been fully cleared of his obsession with fire, but how do they play? The following gameplay footage was captured on my own TF2 server, Fifth Planet, using the Custom Weapons X plugin. The recent surprise update to Team Fortress 2 broke that plugin, but thankfully I recorded all this footage before then. That shouldn't stop you from having fun on the server and catching up with me from time to time. If you want the server IP, then check the description for a link to the announcement video and instructions on how to join. Once again, I spent some time during my Twitch streams testing out the custom weapon I made, though unlike last time, this one might actually be useful. When I was a light heavy, I was often fearing for my life and desperately trying to hold on to what little scraps of health I could, but it was immediately apparent to me that a minigun pyro is actually pretty decent. There's no pre-established subclass for a long-range pyro though, so it'll be much harder to explain to you what it's like, but I'll do my best. You can effectively think of this as a really fast and mobile heavy, but one that deals less damage and has lower health overall. Ow! The air shot, man! Typically, a pyro is only able to deal damage at a close range with their primary, but having the flames be replaced by bullets allows them to hurt enemies from any range. This gives the class a lot more utility, even if they are still most effective when closer to their enemies. That effective range is not just due to damage fall off, for unlike fire particles, bullets do not have an area of effect. So, as is tradition in the school of heavy mains, you need to track your targets perfectly if you want to be rewarded with a sizable kill streak. One thing heavies do not have access to is the movement the pyro retains while firing. This turns out to be their greatest strength, for with it you're able to easily dodge incoming fire while spamming the enemy with your own. The only downside is that you can't jump while firing, but with your minigun messing up your enemy's movements with small mats of knockback on each successful hit, you could deprive them of their ability to dodge. Also unlike the heavy, your constant movement speed lets you chase down enemies relentlessly. They no longer have the opportunity to hide or reload in a place away from you, since you could just follow them around whatever corner they turn. I found it beneficial to continue firing as I ran in such corners, so I will waste no time pumping lead into the bodies of my foes. Ultimately, retreating enemies do not stand a chance against you. You can literally WM1 them from any distance, and their death is pretty much guaranteed if they're trapped into running down a long, narrow passageway. I guess an unfortunate side effect of this experiment was keeping that part of Pyro consistent. To further fuel your deceptive demeanor, players that aren't used to the high mobility of a minigun Pyro are quite prone to being circled. Their first subconscious reaction when they are being pummeled with bullets from behind will be that there is a heavy there, so they will predictably turn a full 180 degrees. If you've already circled them by this time, you've scored yourself just under two seconds of free damage and have probably already killed them. As a plus, the payload cart is an even better defense against incoming fire this time around, and unlike fire particles, bullets are more likely to travel through it. On a side note, the thermal thruster proved quite useful for rushing enemies. It's far more effective with a minigun because now you're not restricted by your target's distance, so you can instantly begin shooting as soon as you get the chance. It was strange how a rather mediocre weapon suddenly started feeling useful for once. As a whole, this minigun pyro sounds great simply from what they can accomplish on their own, so surely they'd be just as, if not more effective within a team setting, right? In the previous video, Heavy was reduced to a background character that was most effective when he wasn't the center of attention, but for Pyro, I think the reverse has happened. With these changes, Pyro is now capable of holding their own and leading the charge. I was able to do things I would have never dared to do as a light heavy, such as pursuing snipers based on my knowledge of the map. And while I did get a chance to see how a minigun Pyro would dominate under the effects of a stock Uber charge, I can only imagine how devastating a Kritzkrieg charge would be. I'm actually having to question whether this Pyro is overpowered, but before we get into that territory, we need to know what it's like to fight each of the nine normal classes in individual matchups. <laughs> You'll finally be able to give Scout a run for his money. His extreme maneuverability will be difficult to predict, but you'll get used to it by standing your ground. As long as your tracking is on point, his dodging efforts will be in vain. Soldiers will barely be an obstacle for you, since you're no longer required to be in range to deal damage. Sure, it sucks that you don't have air blast, but since you're easily able to dodge his rockets, it doesn't affect much. An enemy pyro can be deadly in some circumstances, but only if they're within range and prioritizing their flames over their air blast or other weapons. That is, unless you're on a map with a pit. Then you should expect to die to it at least once. Oh! 
I died that time. <laughs> Demo Man can be dealt with in the same way as soldiers, with one exception. Without Air Blast, you can't push away Sticky Bombs, which means you must painstakingly try to destroy them with your minigun. It's probably best to avoid moving through choke points surrounded by Stickies for this reason. Battling a Heavy with his own gun will most definitely make him mad, for all the right reasons. Your low health and damage penalty will be most problematic here, so make sure you are initiating the encounter and run around the Heavy just like a scout would. It's so much easier to take out engineer buildings now that you don't have to worry whether your fire particles will go around the corner. But the engineer himself will be nearby, and if you're not ready for him, he'll take you out just as quickly with his shotgun. A medic without the vaccinator is very likely defenseless against you. In fact, you're so powerful that it's perfectly acceptable to take out their healing target first to disorient them, but the kill order is up to you. Snipers are still devastating at long range, but close the gap a little and they may need more than skill to take you on. Unless they're using the SMG, they won't be able to outdamage you unless their aim is exceptional. And at long last, we reached the Spy, who I didn't find to be a threat at all during my gameplay. I guess the Spy could never catch up to me without making a scene. You can't spy check with fire, but your minigun will spread enough bullets around to find spies, and if that isn't reliable enough, you can fall back on listening for audio cues from teammates and buildings. And now for my final thoughts on the minigun pyro. Whether it be due to a stroke of genius or by pure luck, this pyro is viable competitively, but I'd venture to guess something as ridiculous as this would never make its way into a comp league. As for if this loadout is overpowered or not, I can't definitively say because I was just goofing around on 5th planet with my stream viewers. If I get enough complaints on my server, I will no doubt nerf the minigun's damage. Compared to the light heavy, there's no contest over which loadout is better. I'd much rather play as this pyro over the pilot episode heavy based on their survivability alone, and I'm sure I'll try out the minigun some other time just for kicks. Let me say, what a ride this has been. I've already gone through a low and a high within the first two episodes of this series alone, and I can't wait to see what the next class will go through and where they will place. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, leave a comment, and share this video with your friends. And to be on location when I'm filming, check the description for the 5th Planet announcement to find the server IP. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you all next time. This video was funded in part by Jerry Lexington, not an actual name. One shudders to imagine what inhuman motives lie behind his generous donations. Thank <laughs> you.